I've been met by Ian Evans, who has been kind enough to give us a tour around and show us where everything is. So I'm going to take you inside, he's given us all the information, I'm hoping I can relate to you um, quite as well as he has done to me. So let's go inside and take a look. Um, obviously there's, there's a lot of stalls that uh, are actually written down as being here, but obviously currently can't make it unfortunately. This is the main entrance the way you would come through, and so let's go take a look. So here we are in the main entrance hall. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful section when you first come in. So I'm going to have to show you the ceiling because it's magnificent. Um, but obviously once uh, I've shown you that, we are going to go through into the floor hall and show you the stores that are going to be in there. Um, obviously then through to the pavilion and the horseshoe and, and all that sort of thing. Um, hopefully I can portray the information as well as Ian has to us. And uh, let's go from there. So first I'm just going to show you this ceiling because that, I just think, is absolutely stunning. And then obviously just the general you know, entrance hall here where everything's going on, being set up. And then more common wise There we go. So, right, let's go through into the floral hall. Right, where I will point out in here um, the stalls that are going to be down this side. Right, so this is the floral hall. And as we head down here, um, on his left, just over here. If you look on the wall, I'll take over and show you on this wall over here. It's such a where park hall pigeon loft is going to be. There they are in the floral hall and uh, what I'm going to do instead of going down there to come back up I'm just going to cut across here and go into into the bar over here where the Spanish suite is. I can't take you into the room but um, I don't know how to get in. I go up here and through these doors here which normally are unlocked and up those stairs if you can just see through there and, uh, that is actually where the Spanish suite is, up there, which is where the Les Green and um, Mark Samwell, uh, Mike Samwell, sorry, uh, auction is going to be. And then adjoining that is also the Renaissance room, which is where there's going to be, again, auctions. There is also going to be auctions going on in the Opera House just across there. But obviously we can't get into there either because obviously everything's locked up at the moment. Main, the main setting up's really going to be tomorrow, but obviously it's the stalls and the, the bird pens that are going to, up today. So as we go down here, I'll just show you this one here. This is actually where walkers are going to be placed. Walkers transport, so that's there. They're going to be down here. And then here, uh, to which Ian has said he's not quite sure why, but Bamford's do have a little one metre stall. Um, there they are. But they do actually have a main stall uh, through into the horseshoe. So we'll go around. That's the, the pavilion or horseshoe, because they call it. But that, we can't actually get through that way, so we're going to go round and down here and in. So we can uh, see what's down here. So here we are into the pavilion, or the horseshoe as they call it, for obvious reasons. So here we are. Here's the Who Dares Wins One Laugh Place stand. Um, I'll just show you down there. I'll see all the stands are marked out with everyone's names. Um, on there, look, his Roper store. So if we just. There are going to be more stalls as well inside here. Uh, obviously lining the insides through here. Um, so if we just go around, have a quick look, 
and some of the stalls that are actually wrote down. I mean, like I say, there are some stalls that are written down here, but actually, unfortunately, aren't coming. So that's Osmond's. Um, TMP breeding. And obviously, Van Robies, which aren't uh, short on getting set up early. Looking good all set up there. Okay, what have we got over here? We've got Blendy Pens over here. So again, there's just a few of them from the store set down here. Um, I mean, did you have to see they go all the way around like that? So we'll just nip inside here and see what stalls are in here, just for a quick one. So we'll point out, I think it's in here. I think it was in here where the big Bamford stall is. Lambourne's pigeon wings. Oh, I think it's down here, there's this one. Yes, here it is. See, there's the Bamford's stall. So it's inside the horseshoe. So it's going to be there. So this is obviously the staging inside. Other than stalls, there's not going to be really anything going on inside here. Um, you know, there's not going to be any auctions or anything like that up there. So we're going to head back out those doors just there. And we're going to head to the ballroom. Take you up onto the balcony so you can see where all the show pens are going to be. So obviously um, we're showing you around the horseshoe and showing you some of the stalls that are actually going to be set up here. Um, obviously there are a few others that I didn't manage to get to show you but you know they're all down here and um, I can't wait to see what's actually set up. Uh, we're now going to make our way through to the ballroom where obviously there's setting up going on there for the show class pigeons um, so we'll set, have a head over there and see what's going on. Right, so we're going to head up these stairs and this will take us to the balcony section where we can then look down on the actual ballroom. But I, tell you, I will tell you something that obviously this is actually our first time I've ever, ever come in here. I've um, been to Blackpool many times but never actually been to the Winter Gardens. And the actual overall um, place, it, it's magnificent and it's just, it overwhelms you when you come and see it with all the absolutely fantastic architecture on the ceiling and the lovely chandeliers hanging down. It's just absolutely magnificent. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna head down these steps here um, and then we're just gonna have to say, take a look down across the whole pan of the ballroom. As you can see, volunteers, hard at work, setting all these tables up and the pens up for these birds. Um, this is where the uh, show class pigeons actually are gonna be. Um, so, so if we just start from this corner, of oh, this balcony section. Oh, there we have a look, a lovely volunteer there setting all the uh, bird pens up. It's, I think what people forget as well is the fact that these people are here, not paid. They are here at, you know, in, their, in their own time doing this, you know, out of the goodness of their hearts and they are the un unsung heroes of this, of this thing. You know, we aren't these people coming, volunteering their time this show probably wouldn't be able to go ahead as well, you know, as well as it does. Um, so, you know, I want to say a big thank you to all these volunteers that do turn up to help with this show. I'll just show you this way. I keep heading down here. It feels very weird because this is a glass balcony. <laughs> so as I'm walking along, it, I feel like I'm going to fall off. <laughs> so just got to keep heading down here, head to the end down here as well. Again, more pens being set up down there. There we are. So again, this is where the show class pigeons are going to be. Um, that's where the stage is all being set for the awards evening, uh, which is going to be nice to see. Again, there's those volunteers just setting up all of the, uh, the pens and putting them on the tables. 
So I'm gonna head up these steps here and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go round and head into the arena, which is where the racing pigeons class is going to be judged. Um, so, uh, oh, I nearly fell up the step. Let's head this way. Again, taking just a nice look out at the whole ballroom. All currently coming together nicely. When we actually got here this morning, this room was empty, there was no tables, there was nothing in it. Um, and these volunteers turned up about uh, an hour or so ago and they've just got to work, just cracked right on and got it done. Um, to see it coming together as quickly as it has done, I mean, I said when we got here, it was empty. So we're going to, like I say, head down now to the arena where the racing pigeon class is going to be judged. But I will say now that obviously there is a lot of walking between rooms, so all that section is going to be sped up. <laughs> So in here is where we enter into the arena and this is where the racing pigeon class is going to be judged. Um, again, got a nice little balcony set to you know, here where we can actually take a good look down across the hall where the tables and bird pens are being set out. Again, volunteers doing a really brilliant job on getting this set up. Nice all the, start, all the uh, lights in the ceiling looking like stars. Again, this is where the racing pigeons are going to be judged in this side. Um, so we'll take a walk down and uh, have a quick look round. Um, just trying to think where we went, where we go next. I say there's that many rooms upon rooms. If we head this way, this actually takes you through into the ballroom on the floor level, instead of obviously being up on the balcony. So you're able to see it from down here um, obviously we are going to have a chat actually with some of the volunteers later on um, because obviously I want to just get their insight into volunteering and, and being here here we have the RPRA not stand uh, this is actually where we are going to uh, there, there goes Ian um, this is where we're actually going to ask obviously interview some of the volunteers uh, that are here um, so just taking a look over there. Just trying not to ruin any of the uh, paper that they've actually got laid out on the floor, which is ready to go onto the tables. So we're gonna head, I'm not sure which door goes to where now. Right, so if we actually head down here. Um, I'm gonna just take a quick look across there. Right, so I did originally say we're actually going to head down that corner there, but it turns out that's actually the wrong way. So it's actually heading over this way um, to head to obviously where we need to actually get to for the next room, um, which is the uh, ice lounge. So um, I'm just going to go obviously over here without obviously getting in anyone's way and tripping anybody over. Yeah. Oh, let's just cut down yeah. here. Because uh, obviously that's how they they're busy, I don't want to uh, get under their feet and stop their progress. <laughs> so we're actually going to head through that door there, which will take us into the next section. Again, it's where some more stalls are going to be. Um, I'll just uh, I'll be able to mention a couple of the stalls. So if we just head up these steps here. So in here, this is the uh, ice lounge, or well, that's what Ian told us it was called. He's not sure. Uh, there are stalls going to be either side in here. Um, obviously, there is already one set up there with all their bird cages on it. Um, so just a couple of stalls. I say the stalls either side. This one's already set up down here, which is uh, Royal Oak Lofts, and then some more this side. Uh, in here and as we head through these doors this is into the Olympia leg um, and here on the left hand side which is Buckton's there uh, they are who are actually uh, one of the official sponsors uh, for the, uh, the show this year 
um, along with walkers they're also the other sponsor um, so as you can see they've got a pretty big stretch across here we're gonna head down these steps here into where uh, that's the body and ridewood stall and through into the Olympia Hall <laughs> So if we just head down here without getting anyone's way, that's, that's what we want to do. Join me to experience. And then down these steps here. And then here we've got the body and ride wood stall that's already set up. Well, the stall set up, they're just getting all the products set out onto it. Doing a really good job there actually. Might have to do a bit of shopping before I leave. So this is all their stuff obviously that they're uh, getting set up currently. Here we are. So as we head through these double doors here, oh, I like those drinkers. As we head through the, these double doors here, this actually takes you into the Olympia Hall. Um, again, which is gonna have uh, stalls across these walls here. Um, Stalls that are going to be across the side of this whiteboard, plus stalls lined all up there. And um, there's also going to be stalls on the other side of this white wall, which I'll take you around there because there's going to be like eco lofts that are going to be here. Um, tunnel lofts, uh, Ian's not sure if they are coming, but here we've got this way eco lofts would bit is going to be. Um, hopefully, yeah, uh, tomorrow they'll have a loft set up here or two and we'll uh, be able to get that then just on the other side of this white wall I'll take you around this is actually where Colin's store's going to be Pigeon specifics already found ya and again stores are going to be lined all up this side here and then when we head back up those stone steps there we're back to the beginning So as we head back up these steps here, it actually takes us to near to where the horseshoe is where we've already been to. Uh, we're actually going to head and get a little bit of something to eat uh, right now and then we're going to go and interview some of the volunteers. Um, so uh, we shall see you in a bit. Hi, so this is Richard Chambers. If you can just tell us what your role is in the RPRA. Yeah, my name is Richard Chambers and uh, my role at the RPRA is Development Officer, which mainly is promoting the sport of pigeon racing in the United Kingdom. Um, we're here today at the Blackpool Show and this weekend just to show people a little bit more about the sport and also people who are just walking off the street what the sport's about because for the vast majority of people who don't fly pigeons, they don't know what the sport is. So my role for the last six years now has been to promote the sport here at Blackpool and throughout the year as well. Um, we're here at the show and this is our 50th year and there's been a lot of money given to charities in the past you know, 50 years. It's been a, a fundamental, millions of pounds been given to charities. And one of the uh, causes that the show has actually uh, funded was actually my project called the RPRA project. Uh, and that's where we put pigeon lofts into schools so school children can learn about pigeons and they can also get to fly them. And there's two aspects of that. We have the school projects that have the pigeons on their own, and we have the school pigeons who just send their pigeons to the one loft race that we also run here at the RPRA. There are two schools currently that have been funded by the British Army World Show of the Year, and they are flying now. One is in London at Saden Boyce Primary School, and the other one is at St Andrews Primary School up in Oswaltwistle in Lancashire. And they've been doing really well, and it's great to see them. Again, we're here again today uh, for anybody to come and have a look at what we're doing and for any questions that you have, please come along and see me. My name's Richard, it'd be absolutely brilliant to see you and if there's any questions at all, put them my way uh, and we really look forward to seeing you down here at Blackpool. Hi Naomi, yeah, I'm Ian Evans and I'm the Chief Executive of the Royal Pigeon Racing Association. My role in the show is the show manager, uh, working with the show year committee to make sure everything runs as smoothly as possible. This year is our 50th anniversary. Um, the show was first um, delivered in Doncaster 50 years ago. Um, moved to, moved to Black, Blackpool shortly afterwards when the Olympiad came to Great Britain. 
um, and it's been here ever since. The this, this show has been an amazing success. I'm, I'm sure if walking around today, uh, you've seen how big the show actually is and the hard work that goes in from many, many volunteers to make the show such a success. We've got volunteers here, believe it or not, who've been coming for 50 years. They've been here year in, year out, turn up every year without fail and put their heart and soul into arranging an event which is primarily there to raise money for charity. And to date, we've raised nearly three million pounds for charity, which is a massive achievement. Dora Pounder. I am now the Chief Steward at uh, the Pigeon Show, the uh, Blackpool Pigeon Show. Uh, I started coming when it first started in Doncaster um, about 50 years ago this year and it, uh, I started coming because of my auntie and uncle who were two, two of the founders of the show. I have never had pigeons. I love coming. I love the atmosphere, the family comes, my daughter comes now, her friends come, my nieces, it's a big family thing and it's a tradition that we come every year um, for the success of the show. We want it to be a success because of, um, well, my auntie and uncle that founded it. And it's a, it is a family affair. It is, we love it. We just want it to be a success because of what it was to raise the money for charity. We all give up our time from work. We don't get paid. We don't do anything. We just come. I love it. I just love the weekend. You meet so many nice people. It's such a good atmosphere. Have you seen uh, the mass changes that have gone over the over the years? Yes. Yeah, there are a lot. Of, there have been a lot of changes when we first started coming. Obviously, as you've seen it, we, we set up everything, but then we used to have to take everything down as well, whereas that's that's changed. Um, people that come, they've been coming for years and years. Is it nice to see the, the new generations coming through yes. that keep that then turn up and start helping as well? Yes. Yeah, it is, it's lovely. And they want to come. They yeah. want it to be a success because they think it's... It is. It's, it's all for raising funds for charity and we love it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Was that all right? Oh, we've just um, come to the Viva rooms at uh, in Blackpool because this is just doing a sound check actually on the uh, things for the gala on Saturday night. It's just show the room. Obviously, this is not what it normally looks like. Obviously, normally there's tables and chairs in the middle of the floor and things. <coughs> Obviously, once it's all set up. For the garden, it'll look a lot different. Oh, but it looks lovely. Obviously, this is our first time I've been here. Um, and so, on the Saturday night, we'll be in here filming the garden for you all as well.